Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today is the day that so many of you have been waiting for. The Mega Build is back. So there's a couple of reasons that you haven't seen the video series for a while now. Um, and not a lot has changed since you last saw it. Um, the first one is that James, the person who has built these systems, uh, has been away for uh, a couple of months or, or six weeks and then um, he had to quarantine for two weeks, which obviously led it on to two months, which was longer than we both expected. So, and obviously, well, don't, don't tell him, but he's kind of important. So uh, I didn't want to do anything without him because I would definitely do it wrong. The other reason is because I have had an issue uh, with the actual tanks themselves. So what I'll do is I will cut a video in now for what, was, what the issue we had with the tanks were. Um, which, uh, th that video is actually filmed from last week. Right, so one of the biggest problems with this build so far, um, other than obviously James going away, has been the weir boxes. Uh, they didn't quite work for what I needed them because they've got two dry sections for the MP40s to go in. Um, so what I've done is I've had them remade. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is go through and basically remove all the pieces of broken glass from, um, from the tanks uh, because I wanna make sure everything is all sorted for uh, when James turns up uh, because I don't want anything else holding the project up basically. I, don't, I want everything to go as smooth as possible. Now the best way to uh, show you exactly what the issue with the dry weir boxes was, um, was to look at some of the broken pieces of glass. Now this is the uh, inside of the dry weir box. Um, this is the outside, so this is the bit that the acrylic sticks to. So th that was fine. Um, the problem was, you see how there's three individual pieces of glass? which you can see better here. See how they're all joined like this? We, we had an issue with them and then we repaired them. Uh, and then the repair meant because of all this silicon, uh, we couldn't fit the MP40s on. So what's happened, what happened in the end was they had to come out and remove the entire weir boxes and, and redo them. Uh, because when the MP40 was on here, it was start, it, either they wouldn't stick properly on some of the tanks or they would start to vibrate. And it's almost like they were missing. They, they, were, they, they were missing the cycle which means obviously that, that virtually made the dry weir boxes essentially useless because they weren't, they weren't fit for purpose. So uh, thankfully, um, the company's come out and replaced them completely. And um, after I've obviously cleaned up all this glass, I'm gonna fill them up with water just to, to, to test them to make sure obviously they're all uh, watertight. So that wasn't the only issue that we had with this system. Um, there is one other thing that we had to do. So this stand wasn't quite level. So what we had to do is we had to put a brace at the bottom and then jack it up so that we didn't have to take all the pipe work away. Or not, not even jack it up, literally just rest the weight of the, uh, of the, uh, the stand on it. And then we had to, we end up cutting the bottoms off each of these to make it level again. That was very frightening for me. Um, but it seems to have been all right. Um, and uh, yeah, so everything is essentially ready for James now. The other thing that's, that we have, which wasn't here last time, is we have the final two tanks. So here and here, uh, we're gonna have this tank and that tank over there. The problem is, because this has been built, this tank here won't fit in. So what James and I are gonna do today is we're going to remove this post um, so we can slide it in sideways uh, because there is literally no turning this tank to fit in that gap, which obviously is too small. We probably should have thought about this before we uh, before we, we put it in, but we had to get this tank built last so we could get it built to exactly that space. Um, this has a, a special weir box on it, which will fit into there, uh, just so that we weren't sort of losing any, uh, we weren't losing any space for growing frags because if you take into account removing that section from here, then that's probably a good, I know, 50, 50 to 100 frags right there, which we wouldn't have been able to use if we hadn't had this special weir box made. Uh, it just makes it much more difficult to, uh, to put it in. So we have two choices. Um, either we cut that post and slide it in sideways, or we will end up removing this top section uh, and then lift it literally, uh, dropping it down in line uh, with the rest of the system. But I think that is pretty much it for, uh, for obviously the update this morning. Right, so it's now quite a long time after the first clip. Um, it has been a very long day, but let me show you something. We have a clear walkway again. Now, if you come down here, I'll show you exactly what's been done today. Um, 
the tanks are in. These tanks were incredibly difficult to get in. Um, there is only a five mil gap either side of the tanks, um, which means to get this one in, we had to literally dismantle this frame. And even then that wasn't enough. And we actually, we had to lift the, uh, we had to lift the tank up and essentially reverse it in. So basically if the tank's like that, sitting like that, you had to lift it up on one end, slide it down in underneath and then put it in. So, so we could fit uh, this bit in there, uh, the weir box, but it's, uh, it's done now. It's done. Uh, and then this one was also not that easy to get in either as well. Those of you that have seen my other videos will know that these two tanks are sort of uh, like added extras. Originally it was going to be a tank similar to that on the end um, where it's just a normal size tank. But I just thought to myself in the future, the chances are I'm going to want more room. So I might as well put them in now. Um, I also will probably be doing some experiments with these tanks. I'm not entirely sure what yet. So the last tank to show you is this little one here. Um, now this one is, uh, is, is multifunctional, uh, but it's essentially going to be a, a, a small quarantine tank. Now I have a five foot quarantine tank already, um, but this one, let's say I go to uh, a shop or I go to a fellow reefer's house and I want to buy from, some frags from them. I don't want to put them directly into these systems, into the main system, so obviously to try to avoid pests. So what I can do, um, I can put them in here. Uh, as you can see, it's got a valve so it can be drained when it's not in use. Uh, it's also got an overflow. Uh, and then it's got these two pipes. And one of these pipes is connected to uh, the SPS tank and one of them is connected to the soft coral tank. So depending on what corals, I can put the water from those systems into here. And then I can obviously uh, observe them for a period of time. There will be a light on this system as well. It, it just allows me to have sort of a, a small setup, which is easy to start up and shut down whenever I, whenever I need to. Uh, I can put a little heater in here and, and basically that, and I can just obviously, I can do little small water changes from the main system if, if I wish. It's just so that I don't have to keep setting up a five foot tank for three or four frags. The other thing that I can do with it, when I'm doing obviously frags here, which as you can see currently is just a mess, um, but when I'm doing frags here, I can, I can have this set, system set up so when I, so I can stick them all down and I can just put them directly into here. And then when I fish, just drain it down. So it's all about ease of use, this one. Although it might not seem like a vast amount has been done, uh, considering obviously this is the first day back, um, the first system has been plumbed in and then all these have been plumbed in as well. Um, so there has been some work, it just doesn't look like a vast amount. The final issue which I have just found, unfortunately, is there is a leak down there. Which, as you can see, is not going to be very easy to get to and it's quite a serious leak because, I mean it doesn't matter because it's, it's, it's running out down a drain outside so it's not a problem that, but it is preventing the RO tank from, um, from filling up as quickly. It's okay because this post comes out, which means, and then these can slide across so we can still get to it. Uh, it's just, it's just a, a setback, but any business has setbacks. So I am, um, I'm not overly worried. But and it's all part of the uh, it's all part of the fun. But then uh, hopefully by the end of this week we'll have water in that system. Uh, we'll be able to start setting up the prophylaxes because obviously I don't want to set them up before I've actually got water in the systems. And then that's it. So hopefully within the next two weeks there will be uh, at least one system up and running. So that will be very exciting. But uh, yeah, as I said, I, I, unfortunately it doesn't appear to be. It doesn't seem like vast amount of work was done, but. Trust me, today has been one of the hardest days in, uh, in this entire build. Um, but yeah, I actually quite like, I like how it looks. This is probably my favorite corner. Where, and when it's all full up with water and it's got obviously paneling on and the floor's been done, um, which I've now had a quote for, it will be, um, yeah, it'll be very exciting. So, right now, hopefully you should start getting more regular updates from this room now, because uh, obviously James is back and it means we can continue. I just want to say a massive thank you to um, all the people that support the channel on Patreon because when the pandemic hit, um, naturally uh, people felt the squeeze and I lost a huge amount of Patreons and the ones that are still remaining, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate what you do for me um, because without you guys, this wouldn't exist basically. So um, I just, yeah, I just wanted to leave a message at the end just to say thank you. And um, for everyone else that enjoys watching the channel, like, obviously, thank you all for the subscriptions. Like, we hit another milestone recently. 
Uh, thank you for all the people that like the channel. Thanks for all the people that dislike the channel because um, YouTube loves engagement, so it doesn't matter if you like or dislike it. Um, I'm happy either way. And um, and yeah, that's that's it basically. So if you do enjoy it, why not click the like button? Um, if you really enjoyed it, why not click the subscribe button? Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.